Hey, AP Chemsters, this is Mrs. Vandula. I'm not bringing you a blank wall, but we're going to go over WSQ today. So this is 14.6 calculating K. Um, I sure hope you did it. So anyway, you watch the video. So here we go. Does equilibrium does or does not change? It does change uh, at different temperatures, but if it's at a constant temperature, no, it will not change. Okay, so we'll talk about what happens in 14.9 if uh, the temperature does change. Uh, does the equilibrium constant depend on the initial concentrations? Um, no, it depends on the equilibrium concentration. So when you're all done, uh, what is Q? Q, <coughs> excuse me, is a reaction quotient. So that is setting up the law of mass action, but using your initial concentrations. And I believe, and I think is at the next section that we're going to find out how we actually use it. But in general, if Q is less than K, you need uh, more products. Uh, so it's going to go to the right. Uh, if your Q is greater than K, you need less products. So it's going to go to the, the left, the reverse. Um, two differences between the BCA table and the ice table. Number one is huge. Make sure you know it. Uh, BCA must be in moles, ice must be in molarity. BCA goes to completion, ice does not, it goes to equilibrium, all right? So you use a BCA, ta BCA table um, in reactions that go to completion, mainly like if you, if you form a solid, that's going to drive it to completion. Um, so how do you know the difference? Oh, that's a really important question. Uh, you look at your arrows. So if it's a singleton arrow, it goes to completion. If it's a double arrow, you're in equilibrium. So what does ice stand for? Initial change equilibrium. Very, very similar to BCA. B is you know, beginning, initial, change again. But A means after, when the reaction is completed. Uh, e is not that. E is at equilibrium when the forward and the reverse reactions uh, equal out. Um, if the initial reaction is given, uh, is it given, excuse me, what is it assumed to be? Zero. Um, describe what you need to do if the initial values are given and just one equilibrium value is given. Well, that's where you use the ice table. That's where you use the same procedure as you would with the BCA. So I saw there were uh, a couple questions. Someone asked, what is Q? And I just answered that and, uh, you know, hang tight and go to section 14.7. You'll learn more about it. And the other one, apparently, Mrs. Vandewey must have made a boo-boo on uh, 14.6 uh, problem number 17. So let me uh, juggle to that. Hang on a second. All right, so let's try it here again. I guess I made a mistake. Uh, so reaction mixture is at 17,000 or 1,700 degrees Celsius. Pretty hot, by the way. Initially contains your methane at 0.115 molarity. Notice it's a molarity. You're all good. Uh, equilibrium, the mixture contains uh, 0.035 of ethene, excuse me, it'd be ethene. Uh, what's the value of the equilibrium count? What's K? So then what? Um, once again, what did we say? What if I did not give you a, um, a value? What do I assume this to be? Oops, sorry, I'm trying to do something else here. What am I doing? Give me a second. Oh, I know what I'm doing. All right, so what do we assume this to be? We assume this to be zero and zero. But what else did we uh, give you? We said that um, this is a point, oops, over here, point zero three five. So then you just use your ice table, just that's a three, believe it or not, five, and you figure out the, the changes, right? So this is point zero three five. I don't want to write it again. Uh, this becomes point, I believe, 105. I multiply it by three. I did that in my head. Hopefully that's right. And um, then I would divide by one times two, and this is minus point oh seven. And then if I were to subtract, then I would get, let me see if I can't figure this out, point, it looks like zero four five. I hope that's right. Again. My head may not be working very well. So anyway, those are your equilibrium constants, or excuse me, concentrations, not constants. So what do I do now? Um, I can now uh, plug it into the e whoops, equilibriums. And see, I already did that. It was easier. And I plug them in. Make sure you cube your H. Make sure you square your methane. Um, and you do get 0 0.020. So I had a wrong answer. So if you fix that, um, That'd be great. So the last part of it, does it favor 
uh, the products or the reactants. So I, I, I think you can kind of tell. I mean, it's less than one. What did we say? What happens if it, it's less than one is going to favor the reactants, isn't it? So thank you for uh, noting my boo-boo. And the other one was if you divide a number by zero. So let's say if you do have a zero in your equilibrium, which would not be equilibrium, of your reactants, um, the question was why isn't it, uh, why is it infinity instead of you can't be defined or undefined? And think about this, as, as the denominator gets closer and closer and closer to zero, the K value gets huge and huge and huge and huge. So I like to think of it that K is so huge, uh, it's like infinite. Um, no, you truly can't uh, define that, any number divided by zero, but as it approaches zero, the number gets huge. And I want to come back to that idea when we're in chapter 15. So I hope that helps. Thank you, everyone, uh, and stay tuned for the next one.